G'day everybody, we got an exciting new update for the Nintendo 64 modding community. And that is the Zelda 64 recompile, specifically for Majora's Mask. But what is so special about this, it is not done through decompiling stuff. In the old way we used to make PC ports, we would get the original code, completely decompile it, so we have the base code fully translated and decompiled. What recompile does is it is a translation layer on top of the old code. So think of this like Apple's translation layer for x64 instruction sets to be done in R. And the way that does it is it converts the x64 instructions into C and then uses that C code to then code on top of for the ARM based processing. And this is really efficient, especially with modern PCs and modern technologies that we have to make these sort of ports happen. So this is fantastic news, not just for Zelda 64 Majora's Mask, but all N64 games. You could think of this less as a remake of the game, and more as a port of the game. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking the N64 code, running it through the translation layer, and then porting it to PC code. And then we use that PC code to then input stuff like mods, mod packs, visual upgrades, and of course, modern controller support and modern controller design schemes. And they have quite a lot of settings that we get to play with. In our general settings, we have gyro aiming. Now this is actually really fantastic because right now we do not get twin stick aiming in this version of Majora's Mask 1.0, but in the future generations, we can probably get twin stick aiming and all these other great features that Ship of Harkonnen has added to their Legend of Zelda remake, which is the better way of saying it, compared to this one's emulated port. So that'll help us with our aiming with our bubbles, our aiming and looking around, and our aiming with bows and slingshots and all the rest. What else we have in our control scheme is we have mouse and keyboard and normal. This is great because it allows us to have flexibility when we're playing the game to actually play it how we want to play it with our control schemes all set up. We've also got our special item slots here, just like we have at Ship at Harkonnen. And then in graphics, we have several options. We have the original resolution, which makes the game look just like it did on the Nintendo the 64 and then we can double that and then have it just be our native resolution for our computer screen itself then we have aspect ratio which allows us to be forced in four by three or we can have it expand which means we have 16 by 9 and any widescreen beyond that we cannot go smaller than four by three so we can't have a really tall boy but that's all right we also have msaa and of course hud placement this allows us to have the hud in different spots based on how we want to be playing the game. Recommend 16 by nine, because it's just easy that way. We have sound, which is really important for turning off health blips, because everyone hates health blips. We don't need that shit. And so that's the basic features. How do you at home get to install this? Well, quite simply, we have to start right here at Mr. Wise Guy, who is the guy who has set up the not just Zelda 64 Majora's Mask recompilation, but an N64 recompilation code tool. Now, what's so great about this? It means we can do this for any game that we want. Any Nintendo 64 game can be recompiled in a couple of days with some hard-coded assholes going crazy about it. So this is really important if you want to start modding and creating ports of your own games at home. This instruction set and this tool set right here on Git will help you out incredibly. But for us, we want to play Majora's Mask. So how do we do that? Well, we want to go to the Zelda 64 recomp by Mr. Wise Guy, and we want to scroll down to the latest releases right here. When we click on this, we get several things we can choose from. We can choose source codes, which we don't really want to use. And then we have the Windows and the Linux versions. Now, what's the difference between the Linux and the Windows version is the instruction sets to make it work on those various systems. Linux uses Vulkan, Windows uses DirectX. So you then click on the one that is right for you, you start downloading it, and you'll end up with a folder that looks like this. But this one I've already done the mod for, so we're going to go to the copy, which I haven't done one yet. From this new install, you're going to select a ROM, and then you're going to find your ROM. This needs to be a USA version of the ROM. There should be only one. And you'll notice that if you just go with the extracted file, it'll tell you there's no ROM format. So you have to extract the ROM out of your extract um, the zip file. So you get an N64 ROM making sure that again it is a USA ROM and then you open this ROM and you'll see the game change from select ROM to start game and the game will just start 
And that's how you install Legend of Zelda's Majora's Mask recompilation. Now what this is really useful for is specifically for the future because this will allow us to have every single N64 game to be playable on modern PCs as well as having very good modding support for all of these new emulated translation layered versions of the game to add ray tracing and other features like dual stick controls and all the rest. This is going to be a huge boost because instead of waiting two, three, four, five years for a game to decompile and then waiting an extra year or so for that game to be converted into a PC playable format, we can just right away go straight to making a PC playable format from the direct code of the ROMs. This is an incredible advancement for everyone. Hope you guys have enjoyed and I hope this helps you play Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. If you enjoyed this video, if you could like it and subscribe, it will help spread the video so everyone can see this video in particular, as well as the channel grow and grow and grow. Hope you guys enjoyed, have a good one, see you later, bye bye.